Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Safari Mac Explores North America. I'm your Safari Mac, your guide and host, helping you make connections to the wild. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you, you've been doing good this week, and I hope you're ready to continue with part two of the American Beaver. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's just get right back to our furry little friends of Vermont's rivers, lakes, or wherever aquatic home you want to call. Now, let's talk about the wild things. Now, first of all, to under to explain this this wild thing, we have to look at ourselves for a minute. We humans like to think of ourselves as highly unique, right? Cut off from the rest of the animal world. But really, that's just not true because we really are just another animal. What makes us one thing that does make us kind of special is that we are able to alter our habitat to make it more efficient for us. So we clear far, we clear away land for farms. We can, t we cut down trees for lumber and such, like anything, right? Beavers are kind of similar like this. In fact, if we want to think about it long and hard enough, beavers are kind of like considered to be the second known animal that can change a habitat to be further better, for the betterment of its own environment or for its own survival. Now, of course we know beavers have these just these really huge incisor teeth and they continuously grow. So to prevent their teeth from getting too long and from having problems down the road, that's why they're constantly always having to look for hard things to chew on, like bark, as a way to kind of naturally grind down their teeth. And finally, believe it or not, we know that beaver dams are pretty big, right? In fact, a number of beavers working together can actually help create dams. In fact, this dam here, in, which I'm not, I haven't revealed the location, this is somewhere within Alberta, Canada, and this is measured to be around 850 meters long, and is thought to have been worked on by many, many different generations of beavers since the 1970s. So can you imagine how big that must be? 850 meters. Do, if you do the math, that's quite a lot of feet. Now, ultimately, in the past, we need to talk about their past and their present problems. Now, in the past, animals have always been kind of naturally hunted for for food, to rid them, to be have them be removed from an area, or for their pelts, right? And of course, beavers were no were no exception. The beaver, because this animal spent spends most of its life you know, thanks into in really parts of it in really cold waters during the winter. As a result, it grows really, really thick fur that at first when you feel it, it feels so pleasing to the touch. So as a result, beaver pelts are were highly sought after by hunters and trappers to, that would that would make very luxurious items like this fur coat or even hats. But back in the day before we learned any better. As a result, unfortunately, beavers were almost hunted to extinction. Now, thankfully, the, that both in North America and in Europe. Now, thankfully, of course, we've managed to cut back on it, and as a result, beavers have managed to make a, an amazing comeback, right? Thanks to such great conservation efforts. However, unfortunately, beavers still face problems today, such as habitat loss, as well as the pollution of their rivers, as well as just continuous human-animal human conflict. So, I mean, why, so what do, you mean, what do I mean? So, unfortunately, beavers are viewed as pests to some people, like agricultural teams and such, because they're, when they build their dams, they're making a water block which can block their source of water to irrigate their crops or to cause nearby fields to flood, ultimately ruining their crops. And of course, that's just not good. Now, it's not their fault, of course, but we don't want to, but you know, it's, we don't, we both have our ways to make. We have our livelihoods to keep in order. But now, there is a way that we can coexist. First of all, I want to show you a little diagram about this is a stream that has that was without beavers. As you can see, the stream impacted the groundwater, drought was the 
vegetation really relies on this groundwater, and as a result, more fires burn hotter. Now here's what, here's what it would look like with beavers. As you can see, the beaver ultimately is like the ultimate reset mechanism for water ecology or just our aquacultures, if you want to call it like that. Because as you can see here, the plants during the drought are able to drink enough water and keep themselves alive. And even during burnings, they're not as affected as those without beavers. So as a result, this means beavers are a kind of keystone species. What they and if we remember that that definition, that means any whatever an, an, certain animals make different things that they do beneficial for other animals in their environment. Can you remember another kind of keystone species? If you guessed elephant, that's right. So here the beaver now they're not growing trees and they're not keeping woodland, not just really woodlands in check. But they're also kind of giving freshwater animals and freshwater habitats a better chance of survival and continued growth. Because this is important. This really can help us teach about how we can respect and how we can keep our water sources from disappearing for good. And really, it is a big, especially with today's, with today's scenario, it is a big deal that if we lose this, we're really in deep, deep trouble. Now, but how are we going to get, how can we live with beavers without having to remove them or having to destroy their dams? Now, one way that people have done it is with a water flow device. Now, these can be a bit expensive and they can be a bit complex, but here, as you can see, the water inside, the water in the um, lot that's around the lodge area, it's still flowing through and out the dam. So the so that the farmers can continue to grow their crops and that beavers don't have to be excluded from their homes. But there's another reason. Now this might seem a bit controversial with what I'm saying, but you gotta hear me out with this. Now I know I said that hunting almost drove beavers to extinction, but that was back when we didn't hunt responsibly. Now, beaver, now hunting beavers can help an area. I mean, we don't want too many of them, but we want don't want too few of them either. Either. So as long as you have the right hunting permits or special permission from the wildlife department, then hunting them should not be as much of a big threat to beavers. And like I said, they've managed to recover exponentially. They've recovered big time since the 1800s. But there's a little bit more that we can do. We just need to remember folks, that these animals are important for our environment. As a keystone species, as a regulator for freshwater habitats, if we can learn to coexist with these animals and not have to kill them, or only to kill if it's absolutely necessary, then we can all learn to better coexist with this industrial mammal of North America. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's all the time I have for today, and I want to thank you all for joining me once again for part two of the American Beaver. But now, for next week, prepare yourself. We are leaving the United States for a little while, and we are going up to Canada to search for a very elusive creature, the Canadian lynx. So now what we're going to do, I, we will return to North America, but for right now, I am intending to travel a little bit up to the northern, to the North Pole, where we can explore some Arctic animals in addition to other creatures of North America. So we'll stay on the North American continent, but we're just going to take a little side trip to the Arctic. And until, and until then, I, as always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, check out my other content for more information. If you have questions about animals or if there's an animal that you want me to uncover in the future, feel free to send me an email, which you'll find the link to down in the description below, and check out my Facebook page for conservation messages as well as tips that you can share with others at home and what you can do to better our world, especially in your own backyard. But until next week, this is Safari Mac, and I will see you all out there. So, so long.